Hi, I'm Hector Garcia, CPA and Advanced QuickBooks Pro Advisor. And one of the industries that we do a lot of accounting and consulting work for are the retail and wholesale industries. When we think of retail and wholesale, we think of several types of companies. For example, with retail, we think of brick and mortar stores that are customer facing. We may also think about some retailers that sell 100% online, otherwise called e-commerce. On the wholesale category, we have wholesale distributors of product that either sell to retail stores or sell to other businesses. And in some cases, we think of small manufacturers that sell straight to the consumer or sell to those wholesalers that eventually sell to those consumers. So those are the type of companies that we think about when we consult this specific industry. Now, the reason why we consider adding apps to a retail and wholesale industry type company is to try to solve for the main pain points that these type of companies get every day. For example, managing inventory on hand and knowing how much they have in stock and or whether or not they can have inventory available for the customers when they ask for them. It's really, really important. Also, planning for inventory ordering and replenishment, it's crucial to make sure that you have enough inventory in stock when the busy season comes in. Tracking back orders is really important. So when the customer orders something that you don't have in stock, you want to make sure you know what's going on with that order so you can fulfill as soon as you can. Now, managing shipments, printing and automating shipping labels are also common pain points. Now, double entry of e-commerce orders into the accounting system, it's really, really big. Some retailers and wholesalers that sell online already have all the information captured from their website or e-commerce site, and having to hand key those sales into their accounting system uh, seems very redundant. Now, tracking the correct cost of goods sold and, of course, the profit margins of your product, it's really important for a business owner to know the performance of their business. And finally, paying sales reps commissions are common pain points in this industry. And when working with QuickBooks Online clients specifically, we have to take a look at their needs and their circumstances to really recommend the best app. Now, if you go to the Apps tab in QuickBooks Online and you click on Apps, and use the search box and you can use simple terms like point of sale, inventory, e-commerce. It will give you a suggestion of the apps that work best for those categories. We can also click on the browse category button and we can click on e-commerce. And that will show us all the apps that connect to multiple e-commerce channels or that are common for e-commerce type businesses. If we click on browse category and click on inventory management, we're going to see those apps as well. There are three apps we're going to deep dive in. One of them is going to be SOS Inventory. The other one's going to be Deer Inventory. And the last one will be Shopify, which is right here. This demo for SOS Inventory will take roughly about 12 minutes. First, we'll cover setup and general overview. Then we'll move on to setting up new inventory items. Then we're going to create a purchase order following by receiving inventory from that purchase order. Then we're going to create a sales order followed by a pick ticket and a shipment. And finally, an invoice for that shipment. Then we're going to talk about the dashboard and the reports. Move on to creating an inventory adjustment. Show you how to sync the data with QuickBooks and what that SOS and QuickBooks Online inventory workflow look like. We'll talk about a few additional features such as manufacturing and some additional integrations. It is important to note that we're activating this new application from the end user or client's perspective. If you're an accounting professional and you want to activate a new application, you may need to log in with administrative access to be able to activate a new app to a company file. I'm going to start with SOS Inventory by clicking on the app, clicking on Get App Now, and we'll go straight into the software. So when you first connect SOS Inventory, it will ask you a couple of setup questions. They're pretty simple. It's going to synchronize the chart of accounts with QuickBooks. It will synchronize the item list. It will synchronize the customer list and the vendor list. 
if you already have all those set up in QuickBooks. Now, one thing that's really important is you must disable inventory in QuickBooks Online because SOS inventory will overtake the entire inventory process. In other words, there's no need to track inventory inside QuickBooks because SOS will do it all and it will send the appropriate transactions and journal entries to make sure that sales, cost of goods sold, and inventory asset get booked into QuickBooks the way you're supposed to. We're gonna show you how that works after we do a couple of transactions. So let's quickly go over how SOS inventory works. So if we click on the inventory section, and then we go into items. We're going to have an item list of all the products and services that we sell. If we click on add new on the right side, it will take us into the new item or new inventory item creation screen. So let's create a new inventory item. Okay, so we're creating a new test inventory item. We're going to give it a sales price of $100. We're going to select the income account associated with this item. We're going to select the inventory asset account and the cost of goods sold account. And this is all from the chart of accounts inside QuickBooks Online. You can also enter a barcode if you're managing barcodes with your inventory. And there's a couple of other settings that we're not going to touch right now, but you can track a warranty. You can track a different SKU number other than the item number. You can have a, a link to the product showcase on your website, additional description, cost. In this case, we're going to give this a cost of 50. We can select the preferred vendor, which is going to be from our vendor list in QuickBooks Online. We can give it a vendor part number if our vendor has a different part number than the part number that we use internally. We can also set up a reorder point. So let's say that we want to have at least five in stock. And when we stock up, we want to have up to 100. You can track weight, dimensions. You can choose whether or not you're going to sync this with QuickBooks. For the most part, we're going to say yes for all these things. And we can choose if the items are supposed to be used in sales forms, purchasing forms, and manufacturing forms. This all has to do with the type of business that you have. We're going to leave the default settings for now, and we're going to go ahead and click on save and close. So now we have all of our products set up, and these are all the same items that we're going to use for purchasing and selling. So let's say we're going to put up a purchase order. So we're going to click on purchasing, and then we're going to click on purchase order. This is going to give me a list of all the outstanding or open purchase orders. I'm going to click on add new on the right side of the screen. I'm going to select the date of my purchase order. I'm going to select the vendor that I'm buying from. I can change the PO number or the purchase order number if I want. Let's call this 10,001. Scroll down. We can hit the drop down menu and select any of the items that we want to sell. So we have the choice of selecting the product from our drop down screen, or we can use a barcode scanner to scan the product. Once you either scan all the products or select the products from your drop down menu that you want to use, you can select the quantities that you're purchasing. So we're going to select a couple of quantities here. We can select our terms from our vendor. We can select the expected date. So let's say we're expecting this in a couple of weeks. We can add some additional messages and click on save and close. Now from this same screen, we can save and send, which means we can email it to our vendors directly and we can save it as a PDF as well. So now that we have multiple purchase orders outstanding, we can choose to receive any of these particular purchase orders. So let's say that our product finally arrived. We're going to click on the drop down menu and click on receive. We can select different quantities if we received more or less than we were supposed to. We can select the date in which we receive the inventory. We can modify the prices on the fly if we receive a vendor bill and there happened to be a modification on the price. And once we're done doing the item receipt, we'll go ahead and click on save and close. So now that we have received the purchase order, it will let me know if the purchase order has been fully completed or partially received, so we can inspect that if we want to. We can now click on the Inventory tab and click on Items. We can see exactly how much of these items we have in stock. Now that we have some stock, we can start selling some of these items. We can click on Sales, Sales Orders. We can click on Add New. Select the customer we want to sell the products to. 
select the items that we want to sell to our customers. Let's say we want to sell them one of each of these items. Quantity one of each. Perfect. Now we can click on save and close. And we have a list of all of our outstanding sales orders. Once we're ready to ship the product, typically we're going to convert the sales order into a pick ticket where we're going to order our warehouse personnel to pick the product off the shelf and stage it for shipping. Our warehouse people will confirm that they have picked the two products that are ready for shipping. You will have a quick preview of how many you have in, st in stock at the moment. And we can follow through the workflow to save and close. Our warehouse personnel can go into the fulfillment section and click on pick tickets. They can see all the open pick tickets that are available. And once they have confirmed that they have picked this order, they will click on the drop down menu and click on create shipment. They will confirm when the product was shipped, how many of the items were shipped. They can add additional information such as tracking number, shipping method, additional messages, and then save and close. Once the shipping team is ready to ship, they're gonna go into the shipment section. They're going to confirm that the order has been shipped and they're gonna create an invoice. They can make any modifications to the invoice that they need to if there's a change in price or messages and then click on save and close. I'm going to click on the dashboard to get back into the home screen. You can preview how many open sales orders, purchase orders and work orders you have from the dashboard. You have several options for reports. We're gonna click on reports. Then we're gonna click on inventory evaluation report. We can see all the products that we have in stock the quantity and the value. And we can also make adjustments to our inventory by clicking on inventory, adjustments, add new, select the items that we have more or less in stock that we're supposed to, increase the stock or decrease the stock and click on save and close. Go back into our inventory items and we'll see exactly how much we have in stock for each item. Now up here in the top, there's a sync button where we can push to do a sync into QuickBooks Online. You don't have to do it each time. You can actually program it to sync every hour or so, but we can click on sync now if we want to see exactly what that looks like inside QuickBooks Online. Once it's done, we can switch over to QuickBooks Online. We can click on the magnifying glass and we can see all the transactions that were generated from SOS inventory. For example, we see an invoice was created. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And this invoice was created from SOS inventory. This was not done in QuickBooks. This was done from the app. And you will have a list of all the items that were sold. Now, these items in QuickBooks Online, they're set up as non-inventory. I'm going to go ahead and close that and show you why. I'll click on the magnifying glass again so we can see the recent transactions. And we'll look at this journal entry that was created. And this journal entry creates our cost of goods sold and inventory ad ad asset adjustments based on all the transactions that we see in SOS inventory. So we don't have to manage inventory per se in QuickBooks. We will manage all of our inventory inside SOS inventory. Now, because SOS inventory is not an accounting program and all it's really designed to do is to keep track of your sales and your purchases, you will still complete certain transactions in QuickBooks Online as well. For example, once the bill for that vendor arrives, you will be paying that inside QuickBooks Online. So for example, if I were to create the bill for the vendor I made that purchase from, you will notice on the right-hand side of the screen where all the open purchase orders that were created in SOS inventory will come into QuickBooks so we can add that to the bill and finish the workflow of bill payments in QuickBooks Online itself. So you will still be entering the bills in QuickBooks from the purchase orders and the item receipts of SOS inventory. So we're going to go ahead and click on save and close. Bill payment feature where we click on quick create and bill payment to pay that bill. Now for customer payments, we're going to be clicking on receive payment because SOS inventory did send the invoice information into QuickBooks. So we actually don't have to bring in the invoices uh, from SOS inventory manually, 
those are going to be pushed into QuickBooks and then we can just receive the payment inside QuickBooks Online. Now let's go back to SOS Inventory and discuss a couple of things that are worth discussing. There are some features around manufacturing. You can do build assemblies, jobs and work orders. So for those small manufacturers that want to track inventory assemblies, work in progress, that sort of thing, SOS Inventory will be, work, will be great for that. You can also track returns, RMAs, and inventory assets that you rent or you lease. So you can, it also has uh, that type of asset tracking, which is great for companies like catering companies that are not necessarily in the wholesale retail industry, but they do deal with inventory. And that's really what SOS Inventory is all about, is helping the QuickBooks user manage inventory better. Now, in terms of integration, it does have a couple of other apps that it integrates with. It can actually integrate from Shopify. If you have an e-commerce website in Shopify, it can bring in all the orders from Shopify into SOS inventory. If you're receiving payments via PayPal, it will also integrate those payments. And if you're using any kind of EDI, it will also integrate that as well. If you're using ShipStation to track your shippings or UPS, you can also connect them into SOS inventory to avoid some double data entry. All in all, I think SOS Inventory is a great app for a small distributor that's managing inventory and using QuickBooks Online that doesn't necessarily need to bring orders from multiple channels. If you are a little bit of a larger e-commerce type of business that needs to bring in data from multiple channels, I actually am going to recommend a different app. I'm going to recommend Dear Inventory. In this demo of Dear Inventory, which will take about 11 minutes, we will cover the following. First, we'll talk about the app setup and general overview. Then we'll discuss multi-channel integrations where Dear Inventory can connect to multiple e-commerce channels to download transactions. Then we'll talk about creating a purchase order. We'll briefly discuss how you can import orders using an Excel or CSV spreadsheet. Then we're going to receive the inventory from those purchase orders, followed by creating a vendor's bill for accounts payable. Then we'll do a couple of sales transactions, such as sales orders and invoices. We will then discuss the workflow between Dear Inventory and QuickBooks Online, so you can see what those transactions look like in QuickBooks Online after it is synced. We'll briefly talk about the point of sale add-on for Dear Inventory for wholesalers that are also retailers. And finally, some thoughts about choosing between SOS Inventory and Dear Inventory add-on for QuickBooks Online. It is important to note that we're activating this new application from the end user or client's perspective. If you're an accounting professional and you want to activate a new application, you may need to log in with administrative access to be able to activate a new app to a company file. So if I click on apps on the left-hand side and type Dear, we're gonna see it right here, Dear Inventory. We'll go ahead and click on that. Click on Get App Now, and let's check out Dear Inventory. Now, when you first open Dear Inventory, you're gonna see a lot of similarities with QuickBooks Online with a left-hand navigation bar and other inventory apps such as SOS Inventory, which is very popular for inventory management, you're gonna see a lot of similarities. Now, I think that Dear Inventory tends to be a little bit more powerful for additional integrations. For example, when we click on the Integrations tab on the left-hand side, you will notice that it can integrate with Amazon e-commerce, it can integrate with eBay e-commerce, Shopify e-commerce, Etsy e-commerce. So when we think about an e-commerce business, that's selling not only on their website, not only phone orders or retail orders, but also from multiple channels, Dear Inventory tends to be a great choice because it can import and bring in all those orders into one platform. Let's take a look at the workflow of Dear Inventory. So let's assume we're gonna start with the purchase. So we're gonna click on purchase, and then we're gonna click right here where it says a new purchase, and we'll click on simple purchase. On the simple purchase screen, you first select the vendor that you're gonna purchase from. Then you're gonna tell it whether or not you get invoiced before you receive the inventory 
or if you receive the inventory before you get invoiced. So that actually changes a little bit of the workflow. Uh, Deer is actually kind of designed to walk you through both steps regardless of how that vendor and you really work. But that's actually a really common challenge that people have is that sometimes they get they get a bill from the vendor before the inventory comes in or vice versa. So I really like the fact that you can do both of these. Now, as you scroll down, you're gonna see a couple of options here. Here where it says order, this is where you choose the items that you're going to order. We can start by clicking on the plus sign to add another product and then coming down to the drop down menu, choosing which product we're gonna purchase. And then we can come to the quantity section and just type in how many of these items we want to purchase. Let's say we wanna purchase 100 at a price of $20. And you get a list of the products that you're gonna purchase. Now, one specific feature that I absolutely love about the inventory is the ability to import from Excel. I'm gonna delete both of these items that I selected. And I'm gonna show you what happens when I click on import. Once I click on import, I can select a particular Excel file. I'm gonna show you what it looks like real quick so you can see. So this Excel file contains a grid of products, quantity, and prices. So I'll simply select that Excel file, click on open. And as long as my item list from the Excel file is the same as Deer inventory, it will actually import all that information. I found that particular feature to be a very, very popular one. So once we're done with our purchase order process, we'll click on the authorize button on the right side. This will confirm or mark that purchase order as ready to be sent. And then we can either email it to our provider or print it if we need to. So we can see the list of all of our purchase orders. We can simply click on the open purchase order we wanna work with. We can also record a supplier deposit. So if we prepay their vendor let's say half of the uh, purchase order, we can select the bank account that we pay them from, select the date in which we pay them, and let's say we paid them $1,000 a couple of days ago. So we'll go ahead and click on create, and it will record that vendor prepayment for future records. Then come over to the right-hand side and click where it says invoicing and receiving. We can either create an invoice or a stock receiving. So assuming that your workflow would be a two-step. First, you receive the product, then you get a bill for it. That's fine. So we'll go ahead and click on Add Stock Receiving. We can click on Copy from Order, and it will bring all the items that have uh, were created on the original purchase order. I'm gonna delete them and show you one more thing. You can also click on Scan, and we can use a barcode scanner to scan the products that we're receiving. Let me scan the other product. Perfect. So now you notice that I have received three of each products from the original purchase order. I will click on authorize. And now we have confirmed our stock receiving. I'm gonna go back to the original list. And we get to see our purchase orders. It will tell us whether or not this has been completely received or not. If we click on the purchase order again, you will notice that we have ordered a lot more than we have received in the past. So we can actually see the history of the right-hand side of how many we have received in the past. We can receive the rest by doing another stock receiving. We can click on copy from order. And it will bring in the balance of the ones that we have not received before. Click on authorize. Now we can create our invoice or our vendor bill simply by clicking on invoice and receiving. Select the invoice number from our vendor. We can click on copy remaining from order. It will bring in everything from the purchase order. At this point, you can adjust the price if there happens to be a change from the original purchase order amount to the final bill amount. If there was any additional shipping costs, we can click here where it says add more items. We can select our freight or shipping item from our drop down menu, select the amount of the cost of shipping. We can scroll down and see our total bill value. And we can enter it here in the top.
once we have entered our vendor bill, which is called invoice in, in Deer Inventory, we'll go ahead and click on Authorize. If there was a previous supplier deposit, it will ask you to apply that payment to the bill. That's actually perfect. We'll click on Yes. If we go back to our list of purchase orders, we're going to see that all of our purchase orders have been fully received. If we click on the supplier section, we're going to get to see all of our vendors and the outstanding balances to their bills. Now let's do some sales transactions. We're going to click over on the sales section on the left hand side. We'll click on simple sale. Select the customer we want to sell to. We can scroll down. We can click on the plus button and drop down menu and select the items that we want to sell them. Notice you will know exactly how many you have in stock of each item. So we'll select this one, select the quantity, let's say it's 20. We can also scan, we'll click on scan, select the product that we want to sell. You will notice all the quantities that I scanned will show up properly here. Then we'll click on save. And at the top, we have several options. We can email it as a quote. We can email it as a sales order. We can email it as a pick list or an invoice. Automatically, when we create a sale, it goes into the estimating stage. We scroll down and we'll look at our workflow history here. Notice that this sale is on quote mode. We can actually convert it from quote to order simply by clicking on order and then clicking on copy from quote. I could also scan or select them by hand. It will bring in all the transactions. Once I click on authorized, it will now convert my quote from estimate to order. It will remain the same transaction number, which is great. From order, we can skip straight to invoice once we ship it to the customer, or we can do the full pick pack ship workflow where we send it to pick, then we send it from pick to pack, then ship, then invoice. For the time being, let's go straight to invoice, click on authorize and receive a partial payment. So we'll click on payment, select the bank account we're depositing into and the amount. Let's go back to the home page for a second. So let me remind you that Deer Inventory is actually kind of a standalone system. It actually doesn't need an accounting system per se. So you could actually do a lot of financial type of stuff in Deer. However, because I work with QuickBooks Online and most of my customers work with QuickBooks Online, the best thing to do is to manage purchases, inventory and sales in Deer and then allow QuickBooks Online to take care of the rest, such as bank reconciliations, accounts receivable and accounts payable. Let's move over to QuickBooks Online and see exactly what happened there. I'm going to go ahead and click on the magnifying glass, which is going to give me my recent transactions. And we're going to see the transactions that were created from Deer Inventory. For example, I'm going to look at the original purchase order. This is the exact purchase order that we created straight from Deer. I'm going to close that. I'm going to click on the recent transactions and look at the actual bill. Deer doesn't actually bring in line items the way SOS inventory does or the way traditionally you would use QuickBooks Online to manage inventory. It would actually bring in all the transactions to the proper accounts. So you get to see how it hit the prepayment account, cost of goods sold, inventory asset. You can also change the way these transactions affect your books or your ledger in QuickBooks on the fly as you see the transactions here. I'm going to go ahead and click on save. Let's also take a look at the invoice. I'm going to go ahead and click on invoice. And notice this is the invoice that it was created from Deer Inventory. For sales transactions, it will use your non-inventory parts to record your sales. But for purchase transactions, it would actually use the actual uh, ledger accounts. You will also notice that a partial payment has been booked over here and I can click on payment and see the payment history. So it's difficult to compare the two apps just because they each of them have its own pros and cons. I think strictly for inventory management, SOS inventory is probably the best choice. If you're going to be doing e-commerce from multiple channels and you want to be able to import some of the data from Excel, for example, 
their inventory is actually a better choice. It's also worth mentioning that their inventory has a point of sale mode that works on a tablet or in a, in a touchscreen computer. So you can have a more sort of visual, easy to use approach. So when you're using their inventory in a retail store as well, if you have strictly a retail store, you probably don't want to go with their inventory. But if you have a combination between retail, wholesale, and inventory management, Deer can also be a great choice. For the Shopify Sync demo, which would take about six minutes, we're first gonna talk about the general setup and overview. Then we're gonna show you how to connect QuickBooks to Shopify, because Shopify is actually its own platform and its own ecosystem. And you're adding QuickBooks to Shopify, not Shopify to QuickBooks. Then we're gonna talk about mapping the QuickBooks chart of accounts to the Shopify Sync app. Then we'll discuss some of the important preferences, such as how do we wanna name the items during the data sync and whether or not we want to sync all of the customer data. Finally, we'll show you how the Shopify and QuickBooks Online workflow works and what the transactions look like inside QuickBooks once they're synced. So the third app I wanna review here is the Shopify app. So when we click on the apps tab on the left-hand side and we simply type Shopify, you're gonna notice multiple options, but the one that says Shopify for QuickBooks Online is the one that we're gonna talk about. So when I click on that, it's not going to give me a button that says add app now, because this is actually not a QuickBooks app that connect to Shopify. This is actually a Shopify app that connects to QuickBooks Online, which is kind of an interesting approach. So for that, we actually have to go into our Shopify platform. We have to click on Apps. Then we have to click on Visit Shopify App Store. We have to search QuickBooks in the search box. Click on Into a QuickBooks Online. We're gonna click on Get. Then on this screen, it would actually tell you all the areas that the Shopify app talks to QuickBooks Online. For the most part, it is QuickBooks Online, the one that's extracting data from Shopify and not Shopify extracting data from QuickBooks Online. It is the Shopify orders that we wanna push into QuickBooks Online if we're gonna sync up these apps together. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Install App. Once you're finished connecting it, it's really important to go into the Settings button and do what's called the Account Mapping. And on this screen, we're gonna select every single account from our QuickBooks chart of accounts that we're gonna to map to every transaction. So for example, we get to select our default sales account. So all of our sales are gonna funnel through that account. We're gonna select a separate bank account for PayPal if we happen to be using uh, PayPal. So we'll be selecting that. We're gonna be selecting our payments that we're receiving from Shopify, which is the default account for that. But we typically pick undeposited funds. We're gonna select whether or not we wanna export our payout fees, which is something I would recommend. And you will select which bank account the monies from PayPal are gonna be deposited into. Finally, after it takes away the transaction fee and the account where the transaction fee is going to be charged. So we're gonna see some examples of that once we see a couple of uh, exports. Then we're gonna select how the item name in Shopify should match uh, QuickBooks. So we can either go by title or variant or with SKU, so we're gonna select SKU in this case, and we're gonna select whether or not we want every single customer to come into QuickBooks separately, or if we want one generic customer to be imported um, into QuickBooks. So remember, Shopify is a shopping cart platform. For some customers, we're dealing with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sales per month, so do you really want every single customer to be inside QuickBooks Online? That's really up to you, something to think about. Probably one of the most important decisions you have to make when you first connect a Shopify into QuickBooks. I'm gonna go ahead and click on do not export customers. So it just brings one generic customer. Now we can also set it up for automatic daily exports. So you're always able to set it up for automatic or we can push them manually. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save and I'm gonna select the date range for the transactions that I wanna export and then click on export. Once the export is completed, we can go into our sales section and customers. We can choose our generic Shopify customer. 
click on that and we can see all the transactions that were downloaded from Shopify. All sales will come in as sales receipts and refunded sales will come in as refunds. I'm gonna go ahead and click on one of these sales receipts and show you it uses a generic Shopify customer so it doesn't clog your QuickBooks online with multiple customer names. It sends all the deposits into a Shopify holding account which QuickBooks uses as a clearing account to charge all the merchant fees before it makes the deposit into the bank. Notice that there's a link in the memo section, which is really awesome. So we can click on that and we can go straight into that order. So we can copy and paste that in, in another tab and it will take you straight into the Shopify order. So you know which order specifically it's in question in this case and the date and order number. Let me go ahead and click on save and close. Let me show you also something worth mentioning. I'm gonna click on the gear menu and click on chart of accounts. And we're gonna go into this Shopify holding account and click on view register. And you're gonna to get to see all your sales are gonna be posted here on the deposit side. And when the money gets transferred into the bank, you're gonna see the exact amount that was transferred from Shopify into the bank. And then you're gonna see the exact amount that was a transaction fee that either Shopify charged you or the merchant processor that Shopify is using. And that would always net out to zero once all the transactions from all the sales have been posted and transferred into your bank. So last couple of notes here, when we talk about retail and wholesale industries, we have to keep in mind that the biggest pain point for most of these companies is inventory management. And inventory is the livelihood of a lot of these companies. A lot of these companies invest almost all their money in inventory assets. So safeguarding that inventory, understanding where it is, who they sold it to, who they purchased it from, it's really vital information. Beyond that inventory management, it's gonna be managing all the multiple orders coming in potentially from multiple channels, whether it's eBay, Amazon, Shopify, whatever it is. And finally, only using these apps to process orders and using QuickBooks Online to maintain all their financial information such as customer payments, vendor payments, and finally bank reconciliations. And those are the apps that I recommend for retail and wholesale industry.